Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today we're going to show you some more items that I sold. It's been a little while since I did a what sold on eBay video, so we're going to show you some now. Everything I'm going to show you I paid a dollar or less for. I've tried to limit it to just cheaper items, just so you can see the kind of money we make from pennies. Because a lot of people think you have to spend a lot of money to make a lot of money. Now, everyone isn't some huge, big profit item, but the profit margin is huge for what we pay for the items compared to what we sell them for. So let's hop over there now and show you what we're talking about. So here we are with the first item. Now, this is a Prohibition, Against Prohibition series. I have seven of these cards. I paid less than a dollar for each of them. I bought them in the set. Average price on these is, say, $150 to around $175. I sold this one for $187.50 on sale. Went to somebody who's bought many, many, many items from me. So real good sale here. This one made me a hundred and some odd dollars profit off of just this one. I have six more of these same cards. So this is card number six. This series has seven cards in it. 1883, this is from a Rochester Lager Company. It's literally a beer promotional item also. So really good one here. Really nice sale on this one. I will sell the other ones. I'm in no hurry to sell the other ones because now at this point I have nothing into the other six that I have. If they take a while to sell, no big deal. This one pays for their listings for years from this point on, so I never worry about stuff like this. Again, everything I'm showing you, I paid a dollar or less for. No exaggeration, those are literally the prices I pay for this kind of stuff. My subscribers see what I'm talking about. People buy the exact same types of things for real cheap money. It's just the way these type of areas work. Most people don't pay much attention to them. Now here's a tobacco silk. I've sold many of these. I've got less than a dollar into this. I bought it in quantity. I have three or four hundred more tobacco silks for literally almost nothing. This one I took a best offer for $71 and some odd cents. They paid for shipping, which came to a total of 75 bucks. Real good sale. These are all recent sales. These aren't from way back when. These are all in the last week or so. Typical sales, typical week for us in sales of this type of items. I did sell many items that we paid more than a dollar for, but I'm just showing you a few of the items that we paid almost nothing for. So, Record paid a quarter for it. I took $37.50 on this one. This is a promo teen. Mark Stone sings like teenage love song type of thing. So really nice one here. Nice condition. This one went overseas as well. This is a promo also. It says not for sale on it. The regular label does not look like this. It's multicolored with a blue background. Really nice one here. Now here's another 45 record. This one went for $56. I paid a dollar for this in the sleeve. It's a scarce label. Most of the Crescendo's records are on a main label, or at least Josie are, are, are a more well-known label. Tap, most people haven't heard of. This is one of the first pressings of this one, and it also has the picture sleeve. So nice sale for my investment on this dollar. Another dollar. This is a 78 record. Jerry Wayne, this is The Watchman Fell Asleep. If you like rockabilly, I would recommend going to YouTube and listening to this one. It's really a good one, in my opinion. It's on a Beacon one. The number on this one says 101. That's the disc label on this one. That is the first record that they pressed. Now, they actually came back in and pressed a 108 on top of that. So I believe there was an error in the numbering system on this one. This is a decent price for this one as well. I'm happy with $71 and some change for my dollar. Now, here is something I paid a dollar for as well. This one came with some poster cards. It's an 1863 fire uh, engine company's ball. It's really a unique, interesting piece. It's dated 1863. It's from Germantown. That's in Pennsylvania, if you're unaware of this. So this happened during the, the Civil War. It's got the date, the information, and the whole works. Really nice piece here. Fabulously embossed, serrated edges, scalloped, the whole works. Really nice one here. And this one went around 40 bucks is what I took for it. I do price things higher than I expect to get to them. So I can adjust my prices if I get offers. And that's how it works for us. Here is a label. I sold this one for 30 bucks. This would have been something that they could have stuck onto walls and stuck onto poles and things like that. The street advertising their wares. Their daily lunchroom. This is from St. Louis. Really nice early one here. This person bought several items. I've got less than a dollar into this. I bought... I think around 40 of these types of labels, all from the same person for around 30 bucks. So 
happy with the sale on this one. Again, these are just a small assortment of the cheaper items that we bought. Just again to show you, most people think you have to spend a fortune to make a fortune. That's not the case. It depends on what you're buying. I'm not buying $4 and $5 t-shirts. I'm not buying expensive books. I'm buying something that usually sells fairly quickly for us and gets me a good return on my investment. Small pin here. It's about the size of a cuff button. And this one sold for $42. It's a Masonic piece as well because you can see the Masonic emblem in there. The Rubicon 237 uh, marking on the top, I believe, is a specific subset of the Masonic uh, organization. This is an early one. Screwback pin, probably around 1920 by the construction. Enamel as well on the top. Very, very nice pin. Now, the next one here is a Santa Claus card. Now, this one I paid a dollar for as well. It was bought with a bunch of postcards. It's about the size of a postcard. It did go for $93.75. It's an early image of Santa Claus. Most all of these from the 1870s go extremely well for us. They do show up in mixed lots of postcards, estate sales, live auctions, and things along that line. So a really good one here. Now, here's a religious medal for a Pope John the 23rd. X, X, I, I, I. If you don't know Roman numerals, X is 10, so you add them up. X, X, 20, and then three more ones, 23. It's marked 800. Now, if you don't know what 800 is, that is the UK, the European version of sterling. It's 800 parts out of 1,000 are solid silver. In the U.S., it's 925. 925 parts out of 1,000 are silver. That's where sterling comes from in this country. Sterling in Europe is actually different. So pay attention to that because it is a difference. Many people will see 800 and assume it's not sterling and will pass these items up. Nice piece. It's very small. It was about a quarter of an ounce. I did take 30 some odd bucks for this one. So very happy with that sale. Here's a vintage label. This is a luggage label. Again, paid less than a dollar for it, around 50 cents. I bought many of these all from the same place. It did sell for $25.88. So good sale on this one. Bruce Lee magazine. I pay a dollar or less for most magazines. This is a, a good one here. I liked Bruce Lee. I remember watching Enter the Dragon with my dad, one of my favorites. Um, big fan. You know, he, he had it going on at the time. 20 bucks is what I end up taking. $20 and some odd cents, if I remember right. Next one here is a reel-to-reel -reel tape. I bought a bunch of these. I paid 5 bucks for around 40 or 50 of these total. So I've got pennies into this. It did go for $34.50. It's a Christmas one. Sold very well. No problems at all with that one. This again, a dollar. I bought this with some 78 records. It was a dollar for this purchase. It went for 75 bucks. It's blank, unrecorded discs from Capitol Records. So really nice one here. Someone could still use these to this day. These are acetates. This is what they actually press a full-fledged record from. I throw a price up there, average price 50 to 75. I got 75 bucks top dollar out of it. So another good sale on this one. Here is just a hunk of pewter. It's some old statuary. I paid a few pennies for this one in a big, huge lot. I bought a box lot of pewter items. I took 15 on this one here. Again, I, I pay nothing for almost everything I get. 90% of everything I buy to turn around and resell, I've got nothing into. For me, a dollar is nothing or a quarter or a dime. It's, it's nothing. It's, it's just pennies fodder for what we do. And they all seem to sell for very good money. You just got to know what you're doing and know what you're looking for to make these kinds of, of returns on it. Now, this is a label. Unfortunately, it's missing the sides on it. It would wrap around a can. I have less than half of it. This is the graphical part of it. If the whole thing was there, I probably would have got about 125 for this one. I settled around 35 bucks shipped on this one, so I'm fine. I've got less than a dollar into this. I bought, I think we spent 20 bucks on a whole stack of labels out of sale. I just bought them all. I wasn't even going to look through them all. There were some good ones on the top. I've been selling them ever since, pretty much religiously. So we've, I don't know, a thousand times our investment on this lot alone. So that's typical of what I do. Another one, less than a dollar in this label. It's just another roller skating label. I've sold tons of these. This week alone, we've sold about 20 of these labels in the 17 range, $17 range, up to $34. This one sold for $30 and some odd cents. Very happy with the return as well. Now, this book here is one I got for free. It's missing the back cover. It's totally uh, ruined. The front cover is loose, no spine. It's missing the last three pages. Again, it was free. It was given to me by someone when I was buying other items, other 
sheet music items. I sold it for $34.50. It was up for about 12 days. So no problem on that whatsoever. It's from 1863 is why it sold and carries some value. It has some Civil War related songs and sheets in it. So it was bound edition to start with. So this wasn't like a compilation of, of sheet music or anything like that. Now, if this was a compilation book, I would have torn it apart and sold the individual sheet music segments by themselves. But Here's another one, dollar or less for this one. This is Hank Williams. He's singing Move It On Over, which is a George Thorogood song. He is the original singer of this Hank Williams. So very happy with this one. I sold it for $34 and some odd cents. So good sale, no big deal. This wasn't up for very long either. I usually do very well with Hank Williams as well. Even some of the Hank Williams Jr. songs do go for some decent money. His 78 sell for us all the time. You just got to know who's who and what's what in the musical side of things. Now here is an advertisement. Anything with elephants on it, I always seem to sell very, very well. Circa 1880s, Kerr's Spool Cotton. It's P.T. Barnum. And, and there's honestly a sad story about Jumbo. If you're interested in knowing the story, look it up. I'm not going to go out and tell you because it would probably make some people upset. But this one went for 50 bucks. Very happy with the return on it. Dollar or less, it was bought with some postcards. So real good return on my investment. Now here's a quarter record. This is Frank Sinatra, The Christmas Waltz. I took 20 bucks on this one right here. Quick sale, Christmas time, these always sell. I put it up fairly quickly and it went very well. So 20 bucks for a quarter. That's typical on a lot of these. I can buy records. I can get 5,045 records for less than $200 on many occasions. Most of them won't be worth much, but I know what I'm looking for so I can pick out the good ones and just buy them. Turn around and sell the other ones in lots or dump them off at a local live auction and let them sell them again and be happy with my profits on them. Now, this one here is a Concord California Miniature Golf. Now, as you see, I have three more of these. I sold three. Average price is 25 bucks or higher on the three I sold. I paid less than a dollar a piece for them. It was multiples, so I usually can get multiples for cheaper than a dollar. People don't think there's a chance for them to sell that many of the same card readily, so I can usually penny them down and get a cheaper price on them. So, again, I've already made 75 bucks for around $3 investment into all of these cards. I still have three more to sell. So, again, these cheap items are where we make the majority of our money from. Obviously, we saw some high dollar ones that would dwarf any of these, but a large chunk of what we sell are cheap items, I should say. Baseball player cards. I took $63 for this one and another one from the same person, bought in the same day. All of these early 1880s baseball cards sell very, very well for us. This is an advertising one for gargling oil, which is a quack medicine. And if you're not sure what quack medicine is, go ahead again and look it up. This is identically the size of most postcards. So again, you got to be looking out for this stuff. They show up in bulk purchases for us as well. I do have insider sourcing on these. I have people that buy these across the country for us. So it's not like it's just me sourcing these for our business. So I do pay up for some items. This was one I didn't have to pay up for. So Now here is another interesting engraved card. If you're in my Instagram, you probably saw this already. I took $200 on this. Another cheap dollar purchase on this one. Something that I honestly really enjoyed and looked at. This is an engraved one. Steel plate engraved image on here. Blank back. It's a puzzle and they're advertising a lunch and sample room. A sample room meaning somebody would do catering or offer food for sale. And you'd come in and actually test and taste the wares before you decided to order or you could get a sample before you sat down to eat. Did that back in the day, something you just don't see of unless you're at a grocery store nowadays. Really nice item, honestly. I really, really enjoyed this one here. I saved an image of this for myself as well. Real nice, fine quality image. Photos, I don't know how many of these we've sold. I would guess maybe six or 700 of these in the last couple of years. Not obviously this exact same image, and this one did sell for some good money on this one. So these sell for us all the time. Less than a dollar a piece when I buy them in quantity. We've got around, I should say, 2,000 eight by tens up right this second. And I probably have that many at least or more that I have not listed. I uh, will we'll go through stages. I'll list a bunch you know, at one time and then I'll wait. Philosophy in that is you don't want to flood the market in something that you carry a large number on. 
uh, because people just can't buy a whole bunch all at once in many cases. They'll have to buy them at a staggering, like when they get paid or have extra money or after they've made rent or something along that line. You've got to know the buying habits of the people that you deal with to understand that part of the market. So I don't put everything up. I've talked about this before. We have a 90-day plan where we stagger things out over 90 days. Sometimes it may be pushed, pushed off for months, even past that, depending on what it is, depending on how sta sales are staggering in. If you've done this a while and you flood your own categories with stuff, your your sale price could decline. So we're very careful and cautious on that. So we do charge more than most people and we do get more than most people on these items because of the philosophy and our setup that we do. So just something to think about. Now here's another reel to reel. It came from that same lot. So again, I have pennies into this one. This one did sell for $34.50. It's the harmonic hats. Now it's literally harmonica music. My mom had some records by the, them, so I do know the, the music. I do sell other items from them, like sheet music and things as well. So something to look for. Most of theirs don't go for much money, so don't go out rushing to buy every Harmonic Hats item you see. This is a reel-to-reel, -reel, which is much different than most what you would see. So good sale on that one. Now this is a Deaver's Golden West coffee. Type in Deaver's if you don't know what Deaver's is. I took 30 on this one only because it is trimmed at the top of it. As you can see, it's cut badly, very poorly. And then somebody has scribbled some stuff on the back. It's a cute card. It's a scarce card. They don't show up very often. Most anything Deavers, I sell very quickly. This was only up for, I want to say like 12 hours. And I took that offer. Now, the person who bought it for me has bought for me before. I didn't even worry about, you know, countering on it. Because again, they return all the time. They've bought maybe seven or eight Deavers items, as well as other coffee-related items from the area that this is from. This is like, I believe, Portland, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it says on the back. Yeah, Portland. There's regional coffee companies, and those type of things sell very well. Lion Coffee is one that's around here, and I know which ones usually sell the best because we run into them all over the place. Again, because it's a local company. Centering it on local companies that, are, that have some value is a good key for your area, wherever you live. Everywhere you live or where anybody's living, there are some things that should be sought after because they're scarce in your area. you got to know those to know which ones to buy specially. Now, here's a weird pin. Now, I believe this is a like a uh, organizational pin of some sort. I have no idea on, on where it's from. I didn't even think to go back and ask the person who bought this. It went for $22 and some odd cents, plus they paid the $350 shipping on this one. So very happy with the return on this. This was a quarter. So, you know, for the price, I, I can't beat it. it I, I just was given it almost for the quarter I paid for it. Now here's another one of those die stamps. This one went for 175 bucks. I spent 130 on about 40 or 50 of these. Return on my investment, we're at the $1,000 mark for my $130 investment on these, and I still have about half of them left. I'm in no hurry to sell them, so you know when a good offer comes in, I'll take it. But other than that, I haven't even really marked these down or messed with them much at all. It's just something that you have to wait for the right person to come. But again, I bought these seven or so months ago. It's in a haul video. You can check it out yourself and see how I bought them and the price that I paid. I've just been selling. So in less than, than uh, a year's time, I've got back almost $800 return after fees and everything is said and done. So again, I'm in no hurry to sell everything that I buy. I know people like to flip them quickly and get their money back. I'm at a stage in our business where that's not essential to me at all. Long tail item works just fine because I've got so much up that so much sells on a daily basis that I don't really worry about money coming in when I'm spending large amounts of money. It's just not a concern. Now here's a faux bill. This is a uh, business college bank from St. John Business College. This one went for around 120 bucks, if I remember right on this one. It's a faux bill. Looks like uh, currency. There's a lot of people that collect these sorts of things. This was folded up and shoved in an envelope. So bought it for less than a dollar. I bought it in a bunch of envelopes, and this is what was in there. I was actually buying the stack for stamps and, and covers in there because those are worth some money. So I made a lot of money off of this, and it more than quadrupled my investment into the purchase. And then I've sold the stamps and the covers and, and even tenfold increased my, my profits from there. So everything I buy isn't this cheap, but a large chunk of it is. Now here's a bottle. I paid a dollar for this one here. No big deal in my book. It's a nice piece. Real good return on my investment. It's been up for a while. I turned down many offers on it and ended up selling it for $34.50. The person left flying colors feedback on it. It's a nice early vintage original bottle. It's 
actually a really nice looking piece. Art Deco for sure, 1930s, maybe into the 1940s, but it sold well for us. So hopefully that gives you some thoughts and this and some ideas. Again, this is our business. This is what I do. I know the things that I talk about and show you. I do very, very well on them. It's an area that we've centered in on more so than anything else. We don't do clothes. I don't do books uh, scanning anyway. I do sell tons of books, but I don't go out and just scan books and things like that. I used to. I used to do clothing and all, but, but with these items, I've got so little invested into them. I make so much money out of them. I don't have returns. I don't have to worry about sizes or measurements or multiple images. It's easy. It's small. It's easy to ship without hassle. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. There's some more things that we do sell. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.